Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Petromant. I'm Rudy Holmes and I will be again your host for this week's episode. Last time we talked about the Sync ML tool. How that Sync ML tool can be pretty useful when we need to block some issues with issue policies that are not coming down to the device, or maybe they are but not getting applied on the device. Well, the Sync ML tool is here to show you all the information you need to troubleshoot those kinds of issues. But that's again one tool I use. Another tool I regularly use is the IDAP tool. Within a couple of minutes I will show you why I use it and how I use it. But before we do, I need to give you a heads up or maybe a spoiler, a teaser or how do you want to call it. Because while using the IDAP tool, I noticed that Microsoft is working on a new future. Well, let me explain a little bit more. because. Back in the days, nowadays, when we want to add or remove a certain user from a local group on a device, we need to create an engine policy. With that engine policy, we need to define the set ID, the security identifier object of that user, which we want to add or remove. And that can cause some issues because we don't know the shit, right? So it seems that Microsoft is now working to build in something natively in Windows itself. With that, functionality being built in, we now, at least that seems and how I look at the code, Microsoft will give us the functionality to add uh, the UPN of that username in that engine policy. And once that policy comes down to the device, the AAD to sit, the functionality in Windows itself will do the rest. I think it's a great future and a future we've all been waiting for, right? Because back in the days when we configure a GPO or something on the domain, domain itself, we could do the same. So why not with Intune? Well, it seems that Microsoft is now fixing that. But that was the small heads hop. Let's move on to this week's topic then, the IDA tool. So within a couple of minutes, I will start talking about how I use the tool and why I use the tool. I will show you even a demo how I open a certain DLL file to figure out a fix Microsoft is going to implement within a couple of weeks. So let's move on. What is the IDA tool? The last couple of minutes I explained what the IDA tool is and how we can use that IDA tool to troubleshoot Intune related issues or Windows related issues. But I also told you that it's a perfect tool if we find some new hidden features that Microsoft has yet to announce. So I guess it's time for the demo because Words are just words. I think I will just show you how I do it. So uh, to save some time, I already ensured that I copied over the full volume encryption DLL file to my virtual machine. And that virtual machine has also already the IDA tool installed. Otherwise you just be start staring at me installing and copying stuff. And well, that's not worth your time and money. So with the DLL file moved to my IDA VM, I get this time to open up the DLL file. Uh, and again, the VM is already up and running and I also opened up the DLL file itself. Normally it goes straight to its main function, but I ensure that I also open up the DLL file because once you open up a DLL file with either tool, it could take some time. The bigger the file, how long you need to wait. So I guess we just start looking at it, right? But uh, as I was also mentioning earlier, if we find, want to find some hidden new futures in Windows, we need to have the real future ID. Well, I also ensured that I copied over uh, the whole list of future IDs I had on my latest inside the Canary build. So I guess uh, how I do the, did it with the Vive tool, uh, that is worth another session, but well, let's go on, shall we? If we take a close look at all the features that one has, we will spot the autopilot, bitlocker, out of box, deferral, which, well, it rings a bell to what it's going to do, right? But again, it's just a name. I haven't seen the code right yet. So to do so, I'm going to just start searching for it because we have a search function in the IDA tool. So I'm going to just search for uh, the BitLock out of box experience name, and within a second or two, it is going to show me all the functions that future of which holds that uh, exact same future ID. 
So one of them is a, a full volume encryption is out of box experience complete. Another one is should defer for MDM policy. So I guess we just start opening up the first one and let's see what happens then. So normally, if I did take a close look, I will zoom in a little bit. We will notice that you can choose the red or the green line. Normally you will say green is good, red is bad. Well, I'm going to choose to take the red pill instead of the green pill and start going down the red line. Why? I will show you in a minute. So once I go down that road, I see something else. The same function we spotted uh, a couple of seconds before. Should defer M for MDM policy sync, which is telling me that it should defer for the MDM policy, right? But again, it's just a graphical overview. And uh, the best thing, besides a graphical view, we can also do the same thing, but taking a closer look with something called the pseudocode. So I'm going to press F5. Once I press F5, I will see some code showing up. If I zoom in, it looks like PowerShell, or at least I think it looks like PowerShell. It looks like, uh, well, it is code. And if you know how to read PowerShell, you can read this pseudocode as well. So it just tells us if the uh, autopilot, autopilot BitLocker out of box to fill private future is enabled, it needs to shoot the fur for MDM policy sync. So the out of box experience is complete, is part of the BitLocker encryption kickoff. So once the BitLocker starts encrypting, it goes to the, is the out of box experience complete function, and that function holds the function to check if the MDM policy sync is happening. And the funny thing, if we open, of, if we copy paste this code and just copy paste it to JetGPT, which I already did to ensure I got a good response. So as, as you can see here, it's nothing else. I just copy pasted the code in JetGPT, that's it. Well, in a couple of seconds, it's going to explain me what it does, how it checks if the out-of-box experience is complete, that it checks the future flag, what I was just explaining, and especially how it checks that, and the final decision logic, how it happens and what it does. So the key takeaways, the function determines when BitLocker can start based on the MDM policy sync state, whether out of, out of the box experience has progress far enough, and the future flag, exactly what I was showing you in the block. But that's a DL file for my Windows Insider build. You can pretty much do the same thing, but then for the DL file on the regular Windows build. If I do the same thing over there and search for the same thing, and if you wait a couple of seconds, we will see that it contains zero results. So I guess that explains it all. It's uh, with either tool, we can do some troubleshooting, but we can also use the either tool to figure out what's Microsoft working on, which new futures Microsoft is going to implement. So I guess this was just a brief overview and a demo how we can open up a DLL file uh, in the either tool and I guess you need to just download uh, the trial for uh, the IDA tool because you also have a free version. Normally it's a paid uh, version and it will cost you some money. But again, in my opinion, it's worth the money. And uh, I guess that was the day before today. So I guess it's time to move on. Let's summarize the demo I just gave you. Well, I used the IDA tool, uh, the assembly tool to disassemble some certain DLL files. Those DLL files were responsible for the BitLocker encryption that happens during the out-of-box experience. So the other tool is perfect when you want to figure out what new Windows future is coming. But as I was showing you in the demo, we need to have the future ID. And what I was just talking about, we need to use the Vive tool to figure out which future IDs are going to be implemented in the latest Windows Insider can we build. So I guess next time I will show you how I use the Vive tool to figure out which future IDs are coming. And if you know the uh, future ID, 
we also have the name. And most of the time, this time, Microsoft is pretty good in naming the stuff because the name that's beside the future ID is most of the time already explaining what's going to do. So the Vive tool is something I'm going to show you in the next episode. But before, before we wrap up, I showed you how I use Vive tool to figure out what's Microsoft cooking or what's latest Microsoft future are going to be implemented. Well, Pass My PC is also working on a lot of new cool futures. So please come to our website and book a demo to find out more.